the master chef, Warren L. Booker Jr. <laughs> Let's see. Hello, people. This is Warren L. Booker Jr. Thank you so much. We have reached 100 subscribers. Actually, as of today, it's 149. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's keep it going. Good day, people. It's your master chef, Warren L. Booker Jr. I'm so excited for another episode of uh, The Potluck. I'm kind of having some wardrobe malfunctions here. This shirt was not doing this earlier. And for some reason, when I turn on the studio lights and hop back in front of the camera, yeah, they started doing this. And this is not green, so I don't know what's going on. However, shout out to my classmate, Miss Sequoia Barden, for making me this vintage 1981 limited edition shirt. Uh, and of course, it looks better than this. It's just green screen. Will not let me be great today. However, we're going to move on. And again, I thank you so much for joining. I think I saw Christina Williams uh, that's in here with me. And also on the other side, YouTube, I know that my mother is over there watching, probably had me pulled up on her smart TV watching me. So I am definitely appreciative for uh, the support. Real quick, I posted this on my Facebook page, this right here, and we are preparing, we've been preparing uh, for a while for this major gospel music video shoot. So if you are interested or you know someone that may be interested, please have them to join us uh, July 16th at the Argenta Plaza in North Little Rock at 11 o'clock a.m. Again, that is this Saturday, July 16th, 2022 uh, at 11 o'clock in the Argenta Plaza located in North Little Rock, Arkansas. I see my sister has also joined us. Thank you so much for joining us. So today is another smorgasbord edition. And I'm always excited about that because it kind of goes with how my brain goes, not just focus on one thing, just kind of focus on a lot of things at uh, one time. And today we're going to deal with some serious content. But before we do that, I ran across this one video and it just kind of made a lot of sense to me. So let's watch it and then we'll discuss it. And this is our appetizer for today. Mm -mm. lost everything and it states if you focus on what you've lost then you might lose everything and sometimes people in life we're focused on well i could have had this but then this happened i had this car and i had this house and i had this opportunity and it didn't happen and then you're so focused on that there are opportunities in your face that you'll lose and you end up losing everything. Not only those things that you lost, but you lose those things that were meant for you. So I thought that that was powerful. Moya Jackson, thank you so much for your continued support and thank you so much for tuning, uh, for tuning in. So I'm gonna start dealing with the serious content um, in this moment. And with that being said, people, I know, I, I spent two years talking about this. But I pulled this up from the Arkansas Department of Health, and this is two days old. I didn't see one for today. And as you can see, see two days ago, 10,542 new cases of COVID-19 in Arkansas have been added to this week's update. And again, those are probably the people that are going to the hospital getting tested. Don't forget that we now have at-home tests, and I promise you I'm constantly um, taking them. I think I've taken yeah one uh, this week or maybe even two. But unfortunately, COVID is not gone. It's still here. We're acting as if we don't want it to be here, which is true. We're acting as if it's not. And we're climbing, climbing, climbing. So what is the solution? I mean, I hate the masks. I still wear mine. People look at me crazy in some places I go in um, that, that I wear them. And there are some situations where I don't. Um, but, and that's mainly around, you know, certain people. But um, what are we going to do? I mean, are we going to act as if and, or, or to begin to treat this as like a common cold and just kind of deal with it? And you get it and you, did, you know, be sick for your two weeks or however long or three days and, and move on? I don't know. But this scares me because it seems as if we're getting back to living normal and then this happens. 
And, you know, we are fully open. Um, masks are absent in a lot of places. So I want to hear from y'all. What do y'all think the solution is? How do we handle this? How do we handle this? School is getting ready to start. Um, it's getting ready to start back. How are we going to handle that? I think I saw something, LRSD, you know, we're not in school. The offices are still open and uh, they were now requiring masks again. Uh, Moya Jackson said, it's our new normal. Unfortunately, we need to protect ourselves and continue uh, to wash our hands. Yeah, so I don't, I, and I, I, I had the hope that it would go away. I thought that it would go away, you know, be something of the past, but it does kind of seem like it's here to stay. You know, we want to travel, we want to do things, we want to gather, we want to get together. And I've enjoyed getting back to the new normal. And it gets kind of scary when you just see people around you. Okay, oh, I just, I just, I just, I just, you know, like, what do you do? So Moy says it's our new normal. So I just wanted to throw that up there real quick and see the numbers are rising. And again, these are the ones that are reported to them. Never, don't think about the ones who they get reported who have the at home tests like I have. So yeah, yeah. So. Um, with that being said, with that being said, that was our COVID numbers. And I'm quite sure you guys have have um, been on social media. And to be truthful, oftentimes social media will let you know things before the news uh, reporters actually make to it. Now, everybody's now news reporters because we have these things right here. Um, and I was having a conversation with uh, my best friend and she was saying, you know, like, I don't, I don't think, I mean, I think it's kind of like uh, not unsensitive or it's not sensitive for people to kind of go live and, and, you know, post people uh, who have been in a bad accident or post a dead body laying in the street. I think we recently had something like that happen on university, you know, and the family doesn't even know, or they don't, you know, people don't want to see that. It's traumatic uh, to different people. And I actually agree. Sometimes family members may find out later or find out about the deceased, the deceased loved one just by going live. So I'm wondering, like, I mean, is there a limit? Uh, I mean, should you consider that the family is unaware? I mean, is, is it people's goal to be the first one to report? Because I know we're reporters. I mean, they want to be the first one on the scene. Uh, they want to be the first ones to report something. And then a lot of us or a lot of people's quest is to go viral. So is that the motivation uh, behind some people wanting to be the first one to go live? But I just kind of think it's kind of inconsiderate. Uh, even if you're going live, maybe you can show the tape that's around the body, but actually showing the, the deceased body there, that's just really insensitive. You don't know who could that, who, even if there's no relation to that person, how they may traumatize someone, may have just lost someone the same way or a similar way, or just lost a loved one. So what are your thoughts about that? Uh, what's up, Michelle? What's up, Tweet? Thank you for joining uh, the potluck. So, I mean, when is the appropriate time to go live? I mean, or is it appropriate to go live and on your live, you will show a deceased body? I can think of motor, a few motorcycle accidents that happened recently and this year where um, you could see the body. So... Uh, and a lot of those videos do go viral before you know it. You know, they're they're at a million views. And of course, now, especially digital creators, you get paid for that type of stuff. So but I just still still think that all money is not good money. You know, so that's just my opinion. What are your thoughts about that? And I've been told that I kind of go fast over here. I feel like I'm going slow. So if I'm going too fast, if I see something in the comment section, hey, I'll go back to it. All right. Our next topic. Next topic. And um of course, Arkansas is pushing for a raise for um, the teachers. And some people would probably say, y'all always asking money. Y'all just got a raise. Da, 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 da. But I don't think y'all know the work that we do. A lot of people think that we're sitting at home these two months and not working, just chilling. You know, a lot of teachers have second jobs. And those that are not having second jobs and maybe chilling and vacationing, however, that money that they're getting paid or we're getting paid during the summer, we've already worked for that money. We take less money during the contract year, which is probably like nine, nine and a half, nine and a quarter uh, contract. And you just take less money during the year so you can get your normal paycheck during uh, the summer. But the work that we do is, I mean, really, there's, I ain't gonna say there's no amount of money, but we're definitely not getting that. We're not making that. And there was a comparison chart that I saw here. 
a Walmart truck driver, and I'm not speaking ill on anyone. I mean, it all takes skill, and we need them all. But a Walmart truck driver, $95,000, and I'm quite sure that person had a teacher. Bank of America employee, $45,000. And this is for Arkansas, the base salaries, $45,000, uh, $760. Amazon delivery driver, $39,823. And a public school teacher here in Arkansas to start is $36,000. I think that has been upped now uh, because they're enticing uh, other teachers or people to uh, join education. And some people stay with it, some people don't. I'm telling you, you have to have, you have to be a unique person to be uh, a teacher. So, uh, this has been a problem. This is nothing new. It's been a problem for a while, but it definitely needs to be addressed, especially when there is a promise that you will receive some type of raise and it doesn't happen. Here's another chart for uh, starting teachers pay. You can see different areas. And here in Arkansas, we're still lower. We're still lower. So um, those are my sensitive topics or serious topics, if you will. Now, Christina Williams said inappropriate people should at least have respect for the deceased, if not their family. And I do agree with that. And she also stated teachers are not paid enough to deal with y'all untrained children, no home training, and the behind the scenes and in and outs of the foolishness you guys deal with. It is a total mess to me. I've seen a teacher that just couldn't take the conditions of her job uh, in many ways, and she quit in the middle of the year uh, for mental health and well-being and that has happened that has happened to a lot there are some people i just they just can't do it you your angels you'll never know how they act out of your sight on top of all the other things that seems to be unrealistic and that's expected of you while you're expected to do your job i oftentimes say when things are going great is everybody else's fault and when things are going bad it's the teacher's fault that's the way, that's what I've seen. Now, I'm not saying that's every situation because I have definitely been rewarded. Uh, I have had some success stories. I have been shown appreciation. But when you look at the overall uh, picture for years, this job has, in, as far as pay, uh, been unappreciated. Because even growing up, I thought that all teachers were required to work at JCPenney's or Dillard's. That's what I thought. I thought that was a requirement because all of my teachers worked at J.C. Penney's and Dillard's. You go shopping on the weekend after school, they were there. Um, and that's because they're trying to do what my mom say, make ends meet, and they're just not meeting. And then we think about the level of education and the requirements that don't add up. There are some people who are making the same and or more with just a high school diploma or a GED. It doesn't add up. Even some people who have doctorates, they're not making the money that you think. Yet and still, they have almost a million dollars in debt. So that's a problem that we have across the board in the United States that we need to that we need to fix. All right. So those are all my serious topics. Thank you so much, Christina, for chiming in. You made some very, very valid points. Um, and everybody know I'm the son of a preacher man, and you know, I I, I like church. Uh, I like uh, I love the Lord. I like church. And I know that was a singer, Brooke Valentine, who sung a song like, it's about to be a girl fight. Well, I can't say I've never seen a fight in church because I would be lying if that was the case. There's one that I remember and I'll never forget. I'll never forget when and where and how it happened, who was involved. Now, I'm smiling, but I'm not laughing about a fight that uh, happened in church. But here's a situation that I ran across online. I'm going to share that with you. She's just really singing church going on. And then you got a flat foot fight. What up, English? How you doing? Thanks so much for doing it. A flat foot fight in the church house. Now, I did a little further research to see what was going on because that balcony was jumping. Uh, and come to find out, that was a funeral. Okay. Um, 
that was a funeral and it was alleged that the person who was involved with the death of that person showed up and that was at the funeral so that's why the fight broke out I'm not sure if it's true i wasn't there i don't know the people but it's just something i thought was curious now going in the same vein with the church um you know i grew up you know seeing people get baptized and see take me to the water take me to the water take me to the water to be baptized no one but well, i ain't gonna go into all those verses um and this person um went to the water i even heard somebody sing a verse uh one time about i've already died one time i ain't gonna die no more um uh, and i'm wondering did they uh experience this baptism take a look <laughs> I'm not sure if I just witnessed a baptism or if that was attempted murder. I don't know if that man did something to him or he, I, I don't know. But that's the longest time I've ever seen somebody go under the water for a baptism. Now, I've seen some people double dip. My uh, former pastor would say, oh, they didn't get wet enough. You missed their shoulder, dip them back down in there. But that's right, Christina. They were about to drown that man. Um, and I think that was low key, seriously, attempted murder. I think the make out <laughs> talk about a purging. Yeah, he got purged. He got purged. He got purged. He got purged. Uh so that that's something serious. That's something serious. He was definitely about uh to, to drown him. And yeah, he done died one time. I don't think he wanna die no more. That's why he came up grasping for air. And that may be where that uh that may be where that saying or that uh the song song that I was mentioning. Uh, came from, but that was something serious. Now, people, many of you guys probably know, what's up, Brother Cranford? A lot of you guys probably know that I do commercials and do some other stuff. I'm a teacher, just kind of, uh, one of my friends called me Jack. You know, I just try to do what I do. Uh, and I have experienced doing certain commercials for certain areas. You know, they may have had an African-American to do that particular commercial, maybe a Caucasian or Hispanic person do it for certain demographics. You know, you want to, people want to see people that look like them indulging in certain things. And I ran across this McDonald's commercial and I thought that it was kind of unique because it was kind of churchy. And I realized how McDonald's has not changed much uh, in years. So let's take a look. At McDonald's, we do it all for you. To get to church, she's been waiting up since dawn. She wishes I would hurry up and get some breakfast on. But after working hard all week, I'd like to get my rest. So we head, head, head for McDonald's just as soon as we get dressed. Scrambled eggs and sausage and hash brown. Hotcakes and sausage too. Ooh. Egg and muffin makes breakfast fun. They're so good for. to make that thing church that was the first african-american uh mcdonald's commercial targeted to african-americans and they knew exactly what to do what's up will be my friend brother thanks for joining they knew exactly what to do make that thing churchy and you got us and i looked at the hash browns they still look the same i looked at the mcmuffins they still look the same and they they, they haven't they haven't changed much they haven't changed much and believe it or not people if you would like to join in uh, and I'm going to do a recap real quick because I kind of got through this thing real quick. Um, there is a link to StreamYard. You can be added to the video if you want to come in on anything that you've done. 
Now, there are certain things in this world that just make me question or just make me say, why? But that's even the name of my business, Why Warren Entertainment. Um, and people make think, make money off of things that nobody else has ever thought of. That's an invention. That's a true entrepreneur. But some things I just wonder why. And I'm that guy that goes to Walmart or, or to the dollar store and goes to the ass scene on TV section. And I actually do buy some of those things. I own some of those things. But this right here, y'all hit me out with this one. I invented the Jewel Cooler, the first car vent accessory for staying fresh and cold between your legs while driving around on a hot summer day. This one-of-a-kind breezy upgrade device will magnetically snap onto your car's vent and features our directional head that easily slides under your shorts. Then just crank up the fan speed and live your best life feeling crisp all summer long. Jewel cooler. What I want to know, why are you that high? I, I, I just don't. It's a, that's a commercial, people. That's a product that was made only in America. I can guarantee you that's, that that right there says made in the USA. I don't think that that was made in China. I don't think that was made in China. And they left Gerald Levert. <laughs> I'm with you, Drew. Why? Why? And you're right, Christina. It, 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 it is hot. It's been some hot days uh, here in Arkansas. And believe it or not, people, I have one more thing to share with you, and then I'll do a quick recap, and I'll be out of here. Um, thieves will steal from anybody. And some people don't believe in Batman, but I do now believe in Batman. Watch this, people. Watch this. Batman, Batman came to say today, that guy was trying to steal money from the man, the, the street performer, trying to steal money from him. But Batman came to save the day, came to say today. I'm here for it. Uh, my my uh, nephew Kelton would love that. So just to kind of recap again this Saturday, if you're interested in being a part of the video shoot with, uh, I'm going to say Tina Campbell, with uh, Tina Adams, uh, she's on that level. Uh, please join us July 16th, 2022 in North Little Rock at the Argenta Plaza. If you have any questions, be sure to um, just contact me. Also, people, our COVID numbers are rising. We got to kind of start doing some of the things we were doing before. If we wanted to change, we can't get different results and doing the same thing, unfortunately. Teacher salaries. I mean, when you look at this, a teacher touched the lives of all these people that are up. And when they are at the bottom, that's that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. So let's fix it. Contact your legislators. Call them. Uh, email them, etc. Let our voices be heard. Um, and if there's nothing else to claim our attention, people, we can consider ourselves dismissed. You guys can go eat some real food. We'll benefit. The Lord watch. The team men D. Why are we absent? One from another. Ah! Uh...